over. You guys would get the best show of your lives. And uh, obviously that'd, that'd be it. You know, an animal like this, you don't really get second chances. Come on. So what I want you to think about in this enclosure, we've got a really good look at the crocodile now. So let's have a look at his, his features, okay? We've got the nostrils right here on the tip of the snout, eyes on the top of the head, just behind the eyes are the ears, just that small slit about an inch long, all along the jawline, raw nerve endings, those little black dots, okay? I was referring to those before. You'll notice that all of the sensors are mounted high on the top of the head. So, although he can stay underwater and still stalk an animal quite well, if he does want to have a look and bring those sensors above the water, he doesn't expose much of his body at all. Okay, the entire body stays uh, well underwater. He just lifts the very top of his head and uh, he can bring all those sensors into play without really giving away his position. Especially if there's reeds or debris in the water, it's going to be very, very hard to spot. You compare that to us, for instance, if we're underwater and we want to bring eyes, ears and nose, we've actually got to expose probably more than half of our head before we can do that. So he really is built for that environment. As I said, the skooks or osteoderms, these lumps and bumps, you'll notice they're aligned in rows down the back. And uh, they've got a couple of purposes. Uh, basically, you don't see it, that's a leaf. Basically, channeling the water to prevent movement on the surface. And uh, they also act like little solar panels. And you can see he's very, very quick from side to side. But out here in the shallows, so he's out of the water, that body weight really starts to slow him down. Okay? So, you've got to stay in the pond, mate. And you can see just turning around in that shallow section there, quite an effort for him. It's nowhere near as manoeuvrable as I am on land. He's got that huge body weight to deal with. Out of the water, that tail becomes useless. It's pretty much a big, uh, big anchor or dead weight he's got to drag around behind him. And those small legs are really not designed for moving that big body around quickly on land. You look at land-based animals, long, powerful legs built for running. Okay, he's built for the water. Come on. Okay, and so in the water is where a crocodile is extremely dangerous, and that area immediately around the edge of the water, okay? The big thrash of that tail, as I said, they'll launch themselves out, and so when it comes to crocodile safety, you just have to realise that they will look at people as a food source. They see us no differently to any other animal. Kangaroo, dog, person, makes no difference. If it goes down to the water's edge, it's food for a crocodile. So in areas where crocodiles are living, which is around here, okay, you really have to be diligent in your behaviour around our waterways. You can still go fishing, okay, you can still go boating, and do those recreational activities around the water, camping, all that sort of stuff. Just be aware and give yourself distance from the water's edge. Okay, it's complacency that gets people grabbed by a crocodile. Okay, you see people all the time standing right at the water's edge, sometimes with their feet in the water, fishing. Okay, a crocodile like this can sneak right up to within maybe a foot or two of your legs and you won't even see them.
you've got absolutely no chance in that situation. Okay? Stand back from the water, maybe five or ten metres, you can still cast your line in and you've got that buffer zone. If a crop does launch out, you've got a chance to get away. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So folks, we're going to move down to another enclosure. We're going to get